So, have you noticed these wild neighbors running around in your city? I mean the ones who are probably frolicking in your backyard, maybe waiting until the sun goes down to use the place as a playground. And you may not even know it. I'm talking about red foxes or the cat-like canines that are well integrated in our urban environments, such as this fox family that was filmed with our wildlife camera last spring, where the mom was just nursing her kids along a storm culvert in a neighborhood midday. Now, these fine fellows are known to be timid yet skillful animals who like city life. And they do well amongst us because they're scavengers who are able to take advantage of the city's food and shelter sources. So, being the elusive creatures they are, we wanted to learn about our local foxes and the humans who suspectedly or unsuspectedly live alongside them. Particularly, we wanted to gather information about the fox's ecology, such as their number, diet, distribution, their role and interaction with the urban habitat, as well as the residents' experience with them. So, with my professor, Dr. Linda hooper -Bui, we decided to study the red foxes she's been seeing around the area by using the two most common communication tools in our daily life. Smartphones and Facebook, of course. <laughs> and I just lit up at her idea of using social media to study animals I had found fascinating since a young age from reading those fox fables where the fox would outwit the other animals. And I knew that involving my own community in the process of discovery in a fun and easy way was going to be really exciting. So, how would it be to connect with your community and discover the fantastic world of foxes around you with a touch of a few buttons? Let me tell you how. Well, we started our Facebook page called Fox Finders of Baton Rouge in August 2015 <laughs> and simply asked residents to take photos of the foxes they find with their phones, if possible, because foxes can be tricky, and to post their sightings with the location onto our page, with or without a photo. And to get the community involved, we broadcasted our campaign project through various news outlets and put up flyers around town, including the local libraries. And before we knew it, we had 600 page likes by the third month and 1,450 likes by January 2017. We received over 200 fox sightings from citizens for a rough estimate of 115 foxes in our city. And here are some of those fox photos we received from residents. And additionally, we had over a dozen sightings from the surrounding Baton Rouge areas as well. We even had Facebook users from almost 400 different uh, cities and 16 other countries interested in our page. The great part was that our fellow residents were also enthusiastic about the project, uh, especially when we would post the fox footage from our wildlife cameras. They engaged closely with us on our page and Almost all of them told us all these additional observations and stories they had about their fox neighbors. And many of them just graciously welcomed us onto their yard to observe the foxes and let us put up wildlife cameras, especially during the spring when the uh, foxes would have their dens and raise their families in the middle of their neighborhoods, even under people's houses. And before I knew it, I found myself coordinating with more residents to set up more cameras and even had fox watch parties with them in their yard. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And here are some of the snapshots of that. So what we discovered was how the foxes would teach their youngs to catch birds and also mice and insects, which is, yes, it's great for pest control. Just a role, example of the role they play in our environment and how elusive yet clever they are at living all across the urban landscape and how they would raise their kids or their offspring. As you can see, they would run around and rough play with each other in such a lively manner and sometimes near the streets. Now, Because of this environment that we share, foxes face some risks in the city. Mainly, you might have guessed it, being hit by passing vehicles. In fact, we received many reports from residents throughout the year of foxes getting hit by cars, and the citizens were 
had developed an appreciation and were, were concerned about their fox neighbors and wanted to protect them as we did. So we put up these fox crossing signs with reflectors at a few common fox locations and also asked drivers to be cautious around these areas through our Facebook page. While we're not certain if these efforts led to a decrease in the foxes getting road killed, they did seem to bring further awareness to the community and drivers about the wildlife in our city. So we gained this valuable data about our red fox population uh, about in our neighborhoods, but it was the citizen science that was a powerful and engaging experience in getting a scientist to go beyond our labs and build a relationship with the community. This, in turn, opened the doors to discovery. And the best part of the project was you know, just sharing the experience with the residents and seeing them excited as well. And also getting to de debunk the misconceptions they had about their fox neighbors. And so given all their reports and our observations and camera footage, the most helpful highlight was showing that the foxes actually posed basically no threat to cats and dogs and have even been chased away by them as the more timid creatures they are. With chickens, though, it's a different story, <laughs> right? Yeah. Addressing this issue really reassured many of the concerned citizens who were worried about their pets, which made it the most rewarding part of our research. But foxes are not the only animal that can be demystified. Citizen science via social media allows f f can serve as an official model for studying other wildlife in different parts of the world. The power of social media means most of the world has access to and can document the wildlife around them. And the citizen science approach allows for data to be collected over larger geographical regions in a more effective way than, say, traditional methods like surveying and tagging the animals, which is more time-consuming and costly and just disruptive to their natural state. So why should we care? Because studying the animal population and their behavior through social media can lead to a better and faster understanding of the role they play in our environment. And by participating, the residents can easily connect to and share the natural world occurring around them. This in turn you know, leads to forming a close and quick network between scientists and citizens alike where they can easily interact. This way the different groups can you know, learn from and work with each other. Um, especially in getting to address their concerns about wildlife. And having citizens connected with scientists can also lead to better conservation efforts for our wildlife neighbors by fostering personal relationships and awareness like we experienced with studying the red fox. So it was our citizen scientists that have been the foundation of our project and we're very thankful for that. It's been great and insightful working with them and um, they've been like our eyes and ears for documenting, documenting our urban foxes. They even reinforce others in clearing up some of the misconceptions about these animals by sharing the information from our Facebook page. It was ultimately their sighting that helped us determine where to put our cameras, and they closely welcomed us onto their yard so that we can closely study those fox families living on their property. So I would love to see this model be adapted by more scientists with citizens taking part in the scientific investigation and scientists and citizens gaining more insightful data on wildlife. Can you imagine the valuable information that can easily be gathered in a world that can further be uncovered by having this community network? Well, just use the media that's at your fingertips and take part in the science. So next time there's a wildlife party at your place, you'll be in on the discovery. Thank you. Thank you very much.